So, hi, Joe. I'm really thrilled <laughs> to being able to introduce you. Welcome to the Virtual Roundtable web conference. Today is Friday, the 16th of April, 2021. And we are looking forward to a very special keynote <laughs> from Joe. Uh, the keynote is about sharing good practice in and out of the new normal language classroom. And Joe is an independent language consultant from the UK. He who works for a range of organizations. It's a long list and as, um, you name it. And he's been there, <laughs> I think, <laughs> from the British Council to BBC, Skype, Microsoft, and so on. He has spoken as a, uh, on a lot of uh, conferences, practically all over the world. <laughs> and uh, he was a member of the Ministerial Steering Group of, on Languages for the UK. He has created ICT activities for the new Institut, Institut Francais. <laughs> and uh, he also supported Erasmus Plus projects for, uh, for various countries. A Guardian article said, He's an MFL guru and the man behind the MFL Twitterati. <laughs> so I, I'm very keen to uh, hear more of you. The floor is yours, Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. So I'm going to share my screen. It's really lovely to be here, everybody. Uh, just share my screen. Oh, remembering to click share sound. There we are. And screen there we are click share and then click present and you should be able to see my screen right now so it's uh, really really lovely to be here um thank you to uh Heike for the opportunity um i've keynoted this event um, a few times in recent years um as per normal it's going to be a jam-packed presentation so i'm delighted it's being recorded um, I would love you to write comments in the chat. Uh, in my second screen, I'm going to have the chat open the whole time. So if there's anything that you want to ask me, that's fine. Uh, if It's helpful to me if you put a queue in front of the uh, your question, so it makes it really clear to me. But I've got, my, got the chat open the whole time. If I give you a little bit more background about myself. So I was a languages teacher uh, for 13 years. I taught French um, for three years at secondary school level and then 10 years at middle school level uh, on the Isle of Wight, which is where I live. And um, uh, the middle school I worked was a nine to 13 year old middle school. So I've got upper primary and secondary school experience. I've spoken at IATEFL many, many times. My first IATEFL was uh, 2013, although I've been connecting with people like uh, Graham Stanley and Russell Stannard and Nick Peachy and, and, and so on and so forth um, for many, many years prior to that as well. My Twitter handle is at Joe Dale. I recently surpassed 31,000 followers on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, if you're not already, feel free to do so. If you want to send me messages on Twitter or direct messages or what have you in relation to this presentation, that's fine. My email address is joedale at talk21.com as well. Uh, if you want to um, send me an email after today, that's fine as well. I'd encourage you to make notes, even though we, we are recording right now, because I'm going to be going through lots and lots of different ideas. Essentially, what this presentation is about it's about championing the, the world language educators or the language teachers, um, not only in the UK, but from around the world, but particularly from the UK, I would say. Uh, the, the community known as the MFL Twitterati, which if you haven't heard of before, is a community of language teachers, language consultants like myself and language organizations. And there are 5,000 members of the MFL Twitterers list, which I um, curate. Uh, which is um, the maximum number of people you can have on a particular list, but the hashtag has been used by teachers from around the world for many, many years. Um, so I would really encourage you to, to um, uh, search for that hashtag plus a keyword such as the name of a tool or maybe a skill like speaking or listening, and you'll find lots and lots of different ideas. So let's make a start uh, as we have a lot to cover in the session. And there we are. So this is what I'm going to try and do uh, in the next um, wee while. Um, show different uh, ideas that have been shared by the uh, the MFL Twitterati around all four skills, listening, speaking, reading and writing, about promoting collaboration, about independent learning, about creativity, 
and essentially how the language teacher community in the UK has responded to uh, the pandemic and what has happened um, as a result and how um, lots and lots of teachers have been sort of stepping up and have been sharing good practice um, and it's been incredible. So the first thing I wanted to talk about were the, um, the, the, the TILT webinars. Now TILT stands for Technology and Language Teaching and back in March of last year um, when we went into lockdown myself and my friend um, Helen Myers, <coughs> excuse me, Helen Myers who's the chair of the London branch of the Association for Language Learning we both came up with the same idea, which was to start um, some webinars, which we decided to call Tilt, uh, based on a, on a conference which uh, we uh, have both been organising as well for the last few years, which normally uh, takes place face to face at Helen School. And um, the Association for Language Learning London branch have been uh, doing webinars for many, many years. I think they started back in about 2011 using Adobe Connect and then more uh, recently using Zoom. But um, I think I'm right in saying uh, they were about every six months or so, whereas as of March uh, 2020, we were doing two a week and sometimes three a week because there was such a huge demand for that content. Um, so on the screen we've got right now, uh, these are just uh, these are five US educators that we've had on. It's not just been teachers from the uh, UK um, and further, uh, but further afield. We've had people from the States. We've had people from Australia. Uh, around Europe, um, the Middle East, uh, literally all over the world. So it's been uh, absolutely fantastic. South America as well, I've had a couple of people from Brazil. It's been absolutely fantastic. And it's been a real celebration, I think, of the, um, the people who have, been, uh, who have been interested in languages and technology for many years. We've really been able to uh, harness, if you like, um, their uh, enthusiasm and their expertise and being able to share that with the wider world. So it's been an absolute pleasure. We've done well over 100 webinars and they're all available um, not only on the AWL London uh, website, where Helen has diligently put together lots and lots of different um, uh, descriptions of all the different webinars that we've been doing, but as well as the YouTube links as well. So if you go onto my uh, YouTube channel, which is Jodo 100, or onto Helen's um, channel, which is Helen MFL on YouTube, then you will be able to find the recordings. Most of the recordings are on my channel, but some of these sort of workshop clinic ideas that we did as of January uh, 2021 are on Helen's channel, but there's really hours and hours and hours and hours of free professional development. Um, and I have not been paid anything at all to, to, to do these webinars. I've just done them because it morally it felt the right thing to do. So um, if you're um, looking for ideas around uh, teams in particular, I would really encourage you to have a look at uh, this Facebook group. Um, like the MFL Twitterati, there have been lots of teachers that have been sharing ideas on Facebook. Uh, there, there are dedicated um, Facebook groups for different um, environments, such as the Microsoft environment and the Google environment. This one uh, was created by Jen O'Reilly Turner uh, last year, uh, all around um, uh, talking about Microsoft Teams, Office 365, and different Microsoft tools and how they can be used together. Um, lots and lots of members. There's 5,000 members of this group, I believe and a, a great place to go if you're looking for ideas around using a particular tool or a particular environment that you're working in. Likewise, this is um, a Google uh, equivalent. This was created by Samantha Broom, who is Spanish Sam on Twitter. And uh, as you can see, it's called Google Classroom for MFL Teachers. Um, again, this has got um, quite a few thousand members, 3000 members or so, I think. And um, you know, really, really something for everybody. So I think the, the fact that, that teachers are willing to be proactive and step up as it were and create these groups and encourage people to come along, because obviously that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of admin and all the rest of it just is what, in my opinion, is one of the silver linings of the whole pandemic, the way in which people have um, been willing to share um, so generously uh, resources and ideas and support each other because we've already needed that I think and can you imagine if this had happened 10 years ago so I think it's wonderful that we have um, this sort of uh, this sort of um, desire to share. Case in point this is a Padlet which um, uh, Esmeralda Salgado has put together who is Botones Salgado on Twitter. She's the head of language at Kings Ely School in Cambridge here and she's also the, the lead for digital pedagogy at her school as well. So she put together this Padlet and encouraged people within the MFL Twitterati to share ideas, um, lots of which were based on the Tilt webinars that I've talked about already. So for example, we have done quite a few webinars around escape rooms, around uh, Bitmoji resources, virtual trips, and other lots and lots of other ideas um, around the use of technology to enhance language learning. 
And so if you were to go along to that Padlet, you can see I've put the link um, at the bottom of each slide for each of the reference for all the references I'm referring to. Then you'll be able to see it's a very, very rich resource that's being added to all the time. There's quite a few other Padlets that other people within the um, community have created. For example, there's a Padlet to do with Genially um, resources, which um, the amazing Marie Aliro has created. She's Marie Aliro on Twitter. Uh, there's also one which Anna Granger, who is global underscore educator, has put together around uh, the use of Canva in languages, um, lots and lots of different ideas. And those are all based on Tilt webinars, as I said, that, which are available on my YouTube channel. When we knew that we were going into, um, uh, into the hybrid context back in sort of August time, uh, starting in September for teachers in the UK, Danielle Warren, who is Morgan MFL on Twitter, she put this Padlet together and encouraged people to share ideas so you can see how, how um, collaborative the community has been and how amazing they've been with sharing ideas with, uh, with everybody. So you can see, for example, top left, there's a, a post saying 20 plus teacher and COVID friendly activities for language lessons that was shared by um, the ideal teacher. That's her Twitter handle. Her real name is Sabine. And she has um, a, a resource or a website, which I'm sure you can access via that link as well. And you can see there's lots of other sort of activities that can be done in a hybrid context. So that's great. Can you imagine a year ago, the idea of having to teach face to face and at home at the same time? Incredible. I think educators are absolutely incredible the way in which they've coped with the situation. Um, I like to ask um, the MFL Twitter RT lots of different questions for, for different uh, moments um, throughout the year, um, when I'm, particularly when I'm preparing for a keynote. So this was um, an example. Last year, I was asked to do a presentation for the Goethe Institute in London, um, virtually, of course. And um, it was all about sort of um, what, what have we learned during the pandemic, really? And have, have you felt there's been a paradigm shift in your, um, in your understanding moving from remote to hybrid? And uh, one of the questions, or two of the questions I wanted to ask was, what would you say your do's and don'ts of online teaching? And then the second question, how do you ensure interaction with your students when teaching either synchronously or asynchronously? And um, lots and lots of people replied to my tweet. And what I did was I made a compilation of different um, answers and put them all uh, in this particular Google Doc, which is available at the bottom of the screen. So you can see that the top um, response is keep students organized using Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. I show my homework, put all the activities and links in one hyperdoc or presentation or class notebook, et cetera, and ask students to fill in their answers in text boxes, grid cells in the table. So that was mentioned by quite a few different people. The idea of having everything in one place rather than sending off, uh, sending students off, you know, to a web page or watching a video here or uh, listening to some audio here, et cetera, et cetera, via the chat, but have all the all the resources in the one place, be it a PowerPoint, a Google Slides presentation, a HyperDoc, et cetera. Uh, and then there's lots of other tools which are mentioned there as well, some of which I'm going to be talking about later on in the session, such as Flippity, um, uh, different interactive activities, different quizzes, and so on and so forth. So that was fantastic. So case in point, now that I've sort of talked a little bit about the context and how language teachers have really stepped up, I think, during the pandemic, um, I'm going to talk about a few um, online tools, which I think you'll find useful. Edpuzzle, I would imagine that a lot of you have heard of Edpuzzle, but if you haven't heard of it, then um, Edpuzzle is certainly a very good tool to be used in an asynchronous environment, whereby you, um, you create your account, you create a class in Edpuzzle, you add the students, you can then add in a, a YouTube clip, and you can add in different questions in that YouTube clip. So when the playhead gets to that point in the video, a question will appear and then the uh, students can answer that question. And there are two types of questions you can have. You can either have a multiple choice question or an open-ended question. The multiple choice questions are marked automatically, which is a great time saver for busy teachers. And the open-ended question gives more flexibility with the students' answers. And you have to then mark that manually um, afterwards. So top right there, we've got Lauren Crawley, who's a languages teacher up in the north uh, east of England in York, who did um, a presentation around uh, Ed Puzzle. Um, it's only a five minute presentation, uh, which is available there. You've also got a tilt webinar that Paco Fernandez did for us, who is a Spanish native speaker in Cambridgeshire. And he was looking at the power of music uh, in a remote teaching context. So he was talking about things like uh, Ed Puzzle, as well as lyrics training, lyrics gap, Spotify playlists, TeachFid, and so on and so forth. Absolutely, Lane, uh, PlayPosit is another good tool um, similar to, to Ed Puzzle. Absolutely. 
And then bottom left there, you've got Jane Bassnet, who's Bassnet J on Twitter. Her, along with Esmeralda Salgado, have both been absolutely incredible during the pandemic. They've both got fabulous blogs. Um, Esmeralda's blog is mflcraft.blogspot.com, mflcraft.blogspot.com. And Jane's is whatjanelearntnext.blogspot.com, whatjanelearntnext. And even if you don't work in a Microsoft environment, you'll find lots of really cool ideas there for you to have a look at. Uh, I also created an Edpuzzle tutorial for the post-primary languages um, Ireland uh, organization, which has had some government funding for the last few years um, on promoting languages, which is brilliant to see. And um, this is a step-by-step -step guide on uh, Edpuzzle, how to set up the classes, how to set up your accounts and all the rest of it, how to mark the, uh, the work and so on and so forth, as I've just explained. So that should be really helpful for you, I think. This is a, a video clip which um, I uh, hosted a few weeks ago now. I've been doing, in addition to the Tilt webinars, I've been hosting uh, other webinars independently, which are more sort of like commercial or presentational webinars or about a particular uh, tool. Um, and um, although we, I have done one about um, uh, uh, promoting a book as well, which is good fun. So this one is all about Edpuzzle, sponsored by Edpuzzle, uh, which I was in along with Jane Bassnet and Darren White. We also had um, uh, uh, a lady from Edpuzzle as well. And we had also a little video clip from a teacher called Karen Longman, who I'm going to mention later on, who works at the International School of Monaco. So it's only 45 minutes long, this one, but it's got some really nice tips, even if you're used to Edpuzzle, around differentiation and feedback, which um, went down really, really well. And I've shared this on the LTC um facebook group and other places as well which has been which is oh, which has been great so that's sort of listing ideas we're now going to have a look at some speaking ideas and i'm going to do a, 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 a an interactive bit of the keynote if that's okay um so i'm just going to click on the link here and this is called quicker um i wonder if anyone's heard of quicker before it'd be interesting to know uh, you do need to have an account for this as a teacher, but the students do not need to have an account. So I'm going to show you this live, how it's going to work. So I'm going to click Create Instant Feedback. And here I can click on the blue circle with the white microphone. That allows me to create an individual piece of audio as some audio feedback. Um, or I can click on the... Can, whoever, whoever's microphone is on, can you mute it, please? I think it's Alenka, please. Can you mute your microphone? Thank you, because it's distracting. Okay, can you do that now, Alenka? Thank you. Right, so if I click on the start a, a quicker conversation, which is the other way of using quicker, um, uh, this is really nice for role play practice and conversation. Okay, in a remote or hybrid teaching context. I can give a title here or a tag, which helps me organize my recordings, but I'm just gonna go for it. So here we go. So blah, 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 blah. This is the first line of my conversation, or it could be me giving a presentation, or it could be uh, me as the teacher introducing a learning objective, or describing um, how I want a task to be done in the languages classroom. I've just done stop. It uploads onto the servers. If you're based in uh, the UK, it will go up to, well, if you go to the UK version of the site, I should say it goes up to the uh, UK servers. If, it, um, uh, if you go to the EU version of the site, it will go to EU servers. Um, and the person that made this is a physics teacher from the Southwest of England. And it's completely free, but if you want the audio for longer than three months, then you have to pay, I think, £1.50 or two euros per month to, to keep it for longer than that. But you can download the audio at any time if you want to by right-clicking and clicking Save Audio As, and that allows you to save your audio as a WAV file. You can take a photo as well as part of the free tool, so that could be a visual prompt. You can add text. You can add a web link. I really like this option here, which means you can get rid of all the different responses here apart from the audio one and you can moderate the conversation which is perfect particularly for younger students so if i click start your quicker conversation this comes up uh, like this i can listen back to the audio like this blah 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 this okay i can click on here which is the qr code extension i've got um i can now launch on my ipad oh let's do that again i can launch on my ipad my uh, the camera which means i can now scan the qr code like this I can now tap on that and it means I can now record some audio, which I'm going to do right now. Can you see on my screen? I've got the blue microphone. Here we go. So tap record. Let's do that again. Blah, right, let's do that again. So that was let me do that again. That wasn't very, very good. So I'll just right, I'll just do that again. Here we go. 
blah, 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 blah. This is the second line of the conversation. Uh, or it could be me giving some audio feedback to some speaking work, or I could give the link to students in, say, a breakout room, and they can make a summary of um, what they've been talking about. So really, really useful and flexible tool, I think. Right, so I've just done that. You can see that the first one has come up. So I'm going to delete that because that's not what I want. I want to have the second one, which is about to appear. Let me just refresh the page uh, like that. There we are. It's here. Blah, 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 blah. This okay, then I click approve. You'll see as well that I've got uh, the live captions enabled at the bottom of the screen. To enable live captions, you just go to the three dots here in Chrome. You click settings. You go to advanced and accessibility and you turn on live captions. These are only available in English at the moment, but knowing Google, I'm sure they'll add new languages um, moving forward, but that's just really, really nice, I think, how that works. So I'm now gonna click approve, and what I would love someone to do, or a few people to do, is the following. I'm gonna copy the link uh, that I've just created in the, uh, in the address bar. I would love a few of you to click on that link and just record five, 10 seconds of audio just to show us how it all works. So I will stop saying anything now, and leave it up to you. Cool. So thank you for any, anyone who's just done that. Let me click, press play. And leave it up to you. Okay, so that person didn't actually say anything. Okay, let's see if there's any audio here. Hi, I've got no idea how it works, but it does seem to work. Well done, Josh. That's great. So I'm just going to delete that one simply because it didn't have your voice in it. That's lovely. It only had my voice, but you can see how it's working out. No one else needs to uh, do anything else. Let's have a listen to this one. Yes, yeah, cool. It's an absolutely lovely tool. Cool. So let's click approve. Approve. So the moderation is fantastic. Uh, let's do this one. Oh, now it works. So that's great. Cool. Okay, so I think you're you're a bit in the background there, but that's fine. So I guess my mic is on. Yep. Yep, that's working fine. So you get the idea. I'll just approve everyone else. That's all good. Right. So now what I can do, so you see how moderation works. What I can do now is I can click on the padlock option and I can lock the conversation, which is ideal. Uh, having locked the conversation, it means nobody else can then post um, onto that link, which is really handy. So if you haven't seen Quicker before, that's a really uh, quick and easy way of using it. I think it's fabulous for uh, role play practice, for asynchronous speaking practice, etc. Here's some uh, feedback from different teachers in the MFL Twitterati about how they're using uh, Quicker. So Karen Longman, who I mentioned before, who works at the International School of Monaco, uh, is using it in conjunction with um, pages on her, on her iPad as a way of doing listening, grammar and thinking skills, practice all in one go. Uh, Invercad MFL, that's... Um, Sarah Bell, who is the head of department at Inverclyde um, High School uh, up in, near Scotland, and she did a tilt webinar for us last Saturday, which went down really, really well. Uh, she's using it for live marking. That's for the, you can, as I said, you can record an individual QR code with audio. I've just shown you the conversations version of it. Uh, also in Scotland, you've got Turnbull um, High School. They are using this for um, QR code dictation and translation races. You've got Claire Wilson there. Um, talking about the fact that she's um, enjoying using Quicker for a speaking homework. Nice to hear some students speaking German, given the current limitations in the classroom. Miss Burke saying, I love being able to continue doing speaking practice. Thanks to Quicker feedback. I particularly like the emphatic Hola Senorita at the start of each recording. And then Vincent Everett, who's the head of languages in Norfolk. He's using it for voice to voice dictation. So as you can see, he's saying they listen and repeat back a bit longer each time until they can do the whole text or summarize it or answer a question. Simple, spontaneous responses. Not a presentation just like in the classroom, which is just really cool, I think. Um, right, another idea that you can use Quicker for and Vokaroo uh, is the following. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you this live. So I'm just going to, uh, there we are. I'm just going to put in the name of the student here and show you the idea. So this is, and I, it's not my idea, this is came from Mr. El Pichi, who is Mr. El Pichi on Twitter. And you just put the name of the student in there and then you go to a new tab and you could use Quicker for this, but I'm going to show you an alternative, which is Vokaroo, which I'm sure you all know. And here we go. This is an example of a digital audio praise postcard. So the idea is I would record some audio uh, using Vokaroo or Quicker saying what a wonderful piece of work um, a student has done. I could then send that to the student or I could send it to um, uh, the parents of that student 
uh, saying what a great piece of work they've done. And I think particularly in the lockdown uh, or the hybrid you know, context we might find ourselves in at the moment, then students who may be feeling a bit lonely, I'm sure would really appreciate hearing their teacher's voice. Uh, and that's the idea. Right, so I've just done that, I click save and share. I then click QR code here, click save QR code. It downloads the QR code to Chrome. I go back to the praise postcard and I literally drag and drop the QR code onto the uh, square that I've created. Um, if I was doing this sort of for real, as it were, I would obviously delete the, the background square there and make it look nice and neat. But then having done that, I can then click the file option. I can click download. I could download this as a PNG file or as a PDF and then send it to the student uh, via Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams or whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, I could also um, take a picture of it by enabling the um, or using the snip and sketch tool, which comes with Windows 10 and enabling the print screen button. So if I just show you what I mean by that, if I just quickly move that out of the way, I can quickly click print screen. It does this and I can now I can now quickly do that. Let go. And then you can then just copy and paste that wherever you want to copy it or you can save it to your desktop and upload it somewhere. On a Mac, it is Command Shift 4 to do the same thing, but I really like being able to enable uh, print screen using what's called Snip and Sketch, which is the upgraded version of the snipping tool, if you're familiar with that. So that's another idea there. Um, uh, I've made a hard copy for everyone as well, if you want to make or a forced copy. If I put this in the chat right now and you click on this, uh, you'll be able to make a copy to your drive. And uh, here I've made a a teacher praise postcard as well. If you want to send a teacher some nice praise, then why not do that as well? I thought both would be appropriate. Okay, right. This is Vincent Everett, who I mentioned a moment ago. He's done a really cool uh, street view mystery uh, based in the town of Vesoul in France. And he did a tilt webinar for us around creativity and language learning. And I'm just gonna give you a flavor of how this works. So essentially what he did was he recorded um, some audio uh, playing the roles of different people. He also shared out the uh, the quicker uh, link in the way that I've shown you already. And he asked people in the MFL Twitter RT to uh, record um, their roles as if they were an old man or an old woman or a young girl, etc. And then he was able to combine the audio clips with a written text in, in this case, French, but of course you could replicate it in whichever language you want. So I'll just play this now and you can get a flavor for how it works. Here we go. Here. And your first person to talk to is Un homme assez vieux qui porte un pantalon gris, une chemise bleue, il a les cheveux gris. Um, and then you have this conversation with him. And there he is. He, you can click here to bring up the sound, which I've got here. Um, either that or scan on your phone, this QR code will bring up the audio. So if you click here, you'll hear me basically, or someone else, other contributors saying this. The questions underneath are very much there to help you understand. So what is his name? Je suis Henri. There you are. What is behind you? Regardez derrière vous, il y a un pot de fleurs énorme. Okay, so on the one on, on YouTube, I didn't spoil it for you. I didn't turn around and see the big, the big pot of flowers. But when you do this in class, I know from the, the previous Street View Mysteries, there's um, a gasp out loud moment. Sometimes pupils even scream when you turn around and you suddenly see something like an enormous pot of flowers for no apparent... There we are. So basically what Vincent did was he went through uh, Vesoul and found lots of sort of interesting um, um, things that you could see uh, visually. Uh, like the big pot of flowers there. So he's talking about the clue in the target language, and then the students can then work out um, uh, well, you know, where the big pot of flowers is. I think that's a fantastic idea. So you could take that idea and use it as it is. He's made the resource pack uh, available for free here at the bottom on the TS, or obviously you could replicate the same uh, idea yourself if you wanted to in a new, in a new country, in a new place uh, for sure. Um, another idea around audio feedback is if you're working in a, in a Microsoft environment, you could use um, Steve Morgan ideas, uh, Steve Morgan's idea here, which is using the inbuilt um, audio recording feature within OneNote or in, within Class Notebook. So what he's done here is he's uh, got a table with um, sentences from the students on the in the first column. And the idea is that they then record themselves pronouncing these sentences, and then he could then add another column if he wanted to, to give them then some audio feedback. Uh, and then top right here, this is from Miss Jones back in 2018, talking about using the voice typing feature in Google Docs, which if you don't know, are, uh, is another possibility, which also works in Google Slides as well. You just go to the tools menu, you click voice typing, 
You select the language by clicking on the drop down menu, and then you speak in that language, having clicked on the microphone to enable it, and it will turn your voice into text. But he's, um, Steve is basically saying, yes, that's all very well, but one note is better. So there we are. <laughs> but, um, but that's also really interesting, I think, from the point of view of um, uh, reducing teacher um, marking time. This is an article which I wrote for the Modern Languages Teachers Lounge Facebook group, which is managed by Linguascope. I've also made it available as a Google Doc here, um, which essentially goes through lots and lots of different ideas of being able to promote listening speaking skills and audio feedback using different online tools, either in a Google environment or Microsoft environment or a non-platform specific environment. So again, you should find lots and lots of different ideas uh, useful there. Uh, I'm sure you all know um, these tools, but if you're not aware of all of them, Vokaroo I've shown you already. There's also SpeakPipe, which is very similar to Vokaroo, and you've also got Record MP3 Online. So different ways in which you can set speaking homeworks that work on any device. Um, and the audio, in, certainly in the case of SpeakPipe and Vokaroo, is deleted after three months, but you can always download the audio uh, if you want to in, in uh, all those different cases. Uh, and a really nice way, an easy way of collecting speaking homework from your students as a way of practicing their speaking and their pronunciation and so on and so forth, or for audio feedback as well. So this is a video clip created by a Mandarin Chinese teacher in uh, London, which I came across recently, which um, she does a nice job in going through and explaining how the different tools work. Um, in, other, in other presentations that I've given, I've, I've done sort of like a big long tutorial about Flipgrid. Uh, I thought instead of going through that again, because I don't have time today, I thought I would share this video clip with you, uh, which I did for the Quartisol uh, organization based in Queensland uh, a few months ago now. I did two webinars for them, which are available on my YouTube channel. But in this one, uh, in the second half of this video, I do a step-by-step -step guide with Flipgrid. If you haven't seen Flipgrid before, it's a, a free tool that works, um, that is acquired by uh, Microsoft a few years ago now. And it uh, is really good for asynchronous speaking practice the, the core idea is that you have a grid, you record your question in the target language um, that appears um, as the first video. The students then see that video and then will then respond to that by recording their own videos and then replying to that particular question. You can make the videos moderated. You can have you can hide your face if you want to by using uh, different options such as the uh, pixel uh, filter. You can hide your face using a uh, emoji. You can um, add an image over the whole of your face if you want to as well. You can also use what's called a mic only option, which means your, your video is replaced with a white background with a sort of pulsating blue microphone. Um, there's lots of ways you can use it. You can also use it for screen recording as well. And if you watch this video, then it will um, give you um, all the, you know, like a step-by-step -step guide on how to do all those different things that I've just mentioned. So Flipgrid is also really good for uh, speaking and listening practice. Right, Flippity. Um, I'm going to just show you this live. It'd be interesting to know if people know about Flipperty. Um, I'm just going to spin this for you right now. So this is based on, uh, on a sentence builder, which is proving very popular, certainly in the UK amongst language teachers. So as you can see, I know this is in French, but you get the idea. There's lots of different options in each column. So what you do is you spin the wheel, and each time you spin the wheel, uh, one selection uh, appears randomly from that sentence builder. So the idea is then... You can then either translate these sentences or you can uh, use them for pronunciation practice. You can also click on the little white box here. And this can be done remotely in the chat, for example. You could ask everybody to write the answer in the chat. And then when you then choose one person, or maybe you use a tool like Wheel of Names, where you can put everyone's name randomly, or there's a random name picker in Flipperty as well. You spin the wheel and it chooses someone. And then you say, right, that person, can you please put the answer uh, in the chat? Or, or, or hit enter so it appears in the chat, shall I say. So as you can see here, if you click the little white um, square there on the right hand side, then the text appears nice and big on the screen as well, which is fantastic. So if you don't know French, it's just saying, I do not like to sing at the, at the leisure centre, but if it is warm, and you then spin it again, it will then make another sentence. I can play cards at uh, school, but when it is fine weather and so on and so forth. So that's the idea. So let me go back to here and show you the next idea. So this is the sentence builder that um, that uh, wheel of name, or so that um, Flitty randomizer activity was based on. So you can see here, you've got the different columns. So it's taking one item from each column. Um, you need to have a Google account to create the Google Sheet. If you go to flippity.net, it will give you access to lots and lots of different activity types. 
uh, all of which have instructions and templates for you to copy. And then you just populate them with your own language and away you go. Really, really straightforward um, to use. Uh, this is another idea, this is using the screen recording option in, um, uh, in Flipgrid. So this is a teacher called Mike Elliott. I'll just give you a flavor of this, what he's doing. He's suggesting you can use this for speaking practice and let's go for it. Hi, so this is um, an idea of uh, how to use um, a Flippity randomizer within Flipgrid in order to offer students the opportunity to, to practice pronunciation and simultaneous or spontaneous translation, um, hopefully in quite an easy and engaging way. So I've created a topic on a Flipgrid that, that I have for my year seven class. Um, I have included some instructions. Okay, so click on this randomizer link. So that's a Flippity ran um, randomizer that's been created already. I've asked students to open it in another window. I've already got it open here. Okay, so it's already ready to go. Um, I've then asked students to record their, their video, but instead of recording their face, I want them to record their screen, which I which you can do. And then within that, they need to select the randomizer screen that's the one to record and then um i've set the video for three minutes and what i want them to do in that three minutes is to read out whichever randomly generated sentences they have uh, read them out in french and then to translate them immediately into english um and to do as many of them as they can in three minutes so i'm going to show you how you would do that so i'm logged on as a student now if you click on here to record a response it's going to give me some options here um, as to what we can record. So I don't want to record my face. I'm going to screen record my screen. Okay. So I'm going to capture my screen. I'm going to click on that. I'm then going to choose a, an application window. So I'm going to click on that. So this is now. So now I'm going to flip to that and start doing it. OK, so. Mon frère est assez généreux. My brother is quite generous. Ma mère peut être vraiment travailleuse. My mother can be really hardworking. Ma tante est vraiment amusante. My aunt is really funny. OK, so hopefully that's giving you an idea on what uh, Mike is suggesting there. In other words, uh, uh, giving uh, speaking work for homework uh, as a way of practicing pronunciation as well as translation ideas. Um, cool. I can see that Hiker's a fan of WhatsApp. Um, I think that's fine for adults, but I wouldn't recommend using WhatsApp with um, with teenagers, uh, etc. from the social media element to it. So that's why I'm recommending the other the other tools. But of course, for adults, um, that's fine. This is another um, really cool activity type with Flippity. This is um, uh, Flippity flashcards. Uh, if I click on this link right now, it looks like it's not available, but all you have to do is click watch this video on YouTube. This is um, from Rebecca Jones, who's a language teacher, Hello. language teacher in uh, Cambridgeshire at Swayze Village College. And uh, she just gives her sort of top tips on how to use the Flippity flashcards. Um, you can see here the types of activities I was talking about, such as random name picker, flippity randomizer, scavenger hunt, the board game option that was explained by Sarah Bell last Saturday, um, who uh, whose recording is on my YouTube channel. So I'd really encourage you to have a look at that. But that seven minute video is really fantastic. and I really encourage you to have a look at it. Um, Swayze Village College have also done a full tilt webinar for us. So that's Rebecca and um, her head of department, who's Sabine Pichou. And uh, it's had over a thousand views already. Here it is. So if you're using a Teams environment, it shows um, how they set up a class notebook, how they use third party tools such as Flippity within that. And really, really, really lots of um, cool tips for you to have a look at. So I'm giving you lots of homework, basically. Here's some feedback from people in the MFL Twitterati talking about uh, Flippity. So you can see um, Alice Smith School, which is a primary school in Malaysia, saying that they're using it for enjoying experimenting and generating uh, sentences using vocabulary. You've got Miss B German, who's the head of department in Walsall um, in the Midlands, saying that she's using it uh, for time phrases, pronouns, verbs, and spanning it to get the sentence we have to create. 
You've got Jade Redden talking about assessing speaking skills based on uh, Mike Elliott's tutorial that I just showed you and so on and so forth. So that's really nice. This is a friend of mine who's um, Catherine Bellas, who's Mrs. Bella Cat on Twitter. And she's given step-by-step uh, -step instructions for using Flipperty for practicing the target language as well as for translation. And I love the sentence at the bottom here where she said, if the wheel generates something ridiculous like Christmas in June or, or I hate football because it's great, a class shout n'importe quoi, which if you don't speak French means whatever, which is just great as well, I think. Um, here is another Flipperty activity. This is called Flipperty Manipulatives. I'll give you a flavor of how this works. Um, so you can embed a Vokaroo by recording your Vokaroo uh, audio in the way that I've shown you, and then you just paste the link into the Google Sheet and it appears with the player automatically. So here we go. Last week, I went to the cinema to watch the latest James Bond film. It was great. Afterwards, I went to the restaurant. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm listening to the audio and I'm just putting the tiles into the correct order. So those could be individual words or small chunks and so on and so forth. And then once you've finished ordering everything, you can then just take a screenshot or use the snip and sketch um, tool, which I've talked about already as evidence that you've done the work correctly. And every time you share the link, they'll rejumble the tiles in a different order, which is really fantastic. So really nice for asynchronous listening comprehension practice. Uh, that's called Flipperty Manipulatives. Uh, this is another uh, take on Flipperty Manipulatives. This is um, a teacher, Jérôme Nogues, uh, from the UK, who works in a prep school, and he's uh, also a Microsoft innovative expert. He's combining YouTube uh, with Flipperty Manipulatives. So the idea is that the students watch the video and then put the uh, the language into the correct order. He's also color coded different items, such as all the infinities are in purple, all the quantities are in green, and so on and so forth. So again, really nice asynchronous listening uh, practice. This is um, from Ellen Diaz, who's teaching Diaz on Twitter, who's the head of department in the northeast of England. So she's basing her um, exercise here on a sentence builder, and then she's got five different vocaroos there. And the idea is the children listen to that individually and put the chunks into the correct order based on the sentence builder. So another way of practicing listening um, in, a, in a remote or hybrid teaching context. This is another example. This is from um, uh, Sonia Fedrizi, who is a language teacher in Edinburgh. And um, she has uh, created this activity. So I press play, you'll see how it works. Numéro 1. Mon père est vendeur. Numéro 2, ma mère est coiffeuse. So again, Numéro... you have to put it into the right order, so I'm not going to do the whole thing now, and then take a screenshot. So that's another, another idea, which is cool. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, another idea which um, is great for speaking practice and writing practice is Wheel of Names. If I click on the first one, you'll see how it works. If I spin the wheel in a second, once it comes up, you can see you can use it for a standard um, name picker like this. So let's see which uh, beetle is going to be selected. It's going to be John, a very good choice. Excellent. So now, yeah. So as you can see, what happens is you get the name coming up here. You can then remove that name if you wanted to. You can also add in uh, sentence starters here if you wanted to, whatever you want to include, and you can add images as well. Just to give you a flavor of how it works, if I click create your own. That's an example one. Uh, if I click on new like that, then that's your default one, and I just spin it, and so on and so forth. So what I can do now is once it's selected somebody, like that, okay, I can just show you how easy it is to add your own. So I can just put in as you can see, different, like really, really quick and easy, really fantastic. You can also add an image. So you could add any image that you want. I like using um, the website called autodraw.com. And um, you can do the following. If you haven't seen this before, uh, I'm going to choose the color black. I'm going now going to try and draw a cat with a mouse, no pun intended. And at the top of the screen, Using artificial intelligence, Google is trying to work out what this annotation is supposed to be. It thinks it might be a crown or a leaf or a baseball bat or what have you. So, of course, it's supposed to be a cat. So there it is, the actual cat it's supposed to be. I can now select that like this. I can make it the size I want. I can click on the fill tool. I can change the color. 
I can click here and I can fill it in like that. I can now download that image by clicking the three lines here, click download, click uh, save, there it is. I can now go back to Wheel of Names, which is here, and I can click add image. I can now find, find that image, which is there, and click open, and there it is. That's how you add the image. So in other words, you, instead of having text, you could have just images. Um, so you could use auto draw. There's another website called flaticon.com, flaticon.com, or there's a website called photosforclass.com, which is really nice for royalty free um, images as well. So that's fantastic. So as you can see here, the third one uh, in the wheel, that's the auto draw option. The second one, I'm using the Chrome extension called Emoji Keyboard. So I'm then adding in the different um, items that I want to. Uh, test the children on. So I would spin the wheel. When one of them comes up, I would then I, uh, either ask them to unmute themselves or in the chat, write a sentence talking about a dog, a cinema and a someone cycling and just go from there. OK, so that's how that works. And then also here, if you go to customize, you can um, where it says during spin, you can uh, reduce the amount of time it takes to spin. You can reduce remove the sound if you find that annoying. After spin, you can again remove the sound. You can get rid of the confetti if it as well and click OK. You can also click share like this, click continue, continue, uh, click copy link, and I can now share that in the chat. So I could, for example, if I wanted to, I could make up a uh, wheel of names for every single class that I've got and then favorite them. Or if you click on the save option and you have a Google account, you can actually save them within the account. But what I've just shown you doesn't require an account for you to do that. And then the last one is just uh, using Bitmojis would be um, uh, the students would then choose which activity they want to do based on, or the, the wheel of names would spin the, the wheel and then whichever one comes up, that would be the activity that people would do. That's the idea. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, this is using the uh, Chrome extension called Tab Resize, which allows you to have multiple wheels side by side. It's really simple to use and completely free. So you can, you can then spin all of them and come up with a random sentence, a bit like Flippity um, uh, Randomize that I've shown you already. Here's some examples of teachers using Wheel of Names. So you've got Karin again with a split screen. You can use that with tab resize. You can also uh, use Dualless. There's another one, Dualless, which lets you do that as well. Um, and Tab Scissors and Tab Glue. So Tab Scissors splits the screen and Tab Glue puts it back together. So here you can see that Karine is saying, uh, finally got round to trying Wheel of Names for verbs, tenses, making sentences, you name it, it does it. Uh, Jane again, incorporating Wheel of Names within her class notebook, um, which is really nice as well. So that should be helpful. Classroom Screen, which you may not be aware of, is a free web tool which allows you to organize different um, classroom tools, such as a timer or a noise uh, level indicator, or if you click on the media option and you click on embed, you can paste in a wheel of names. And that's an example that we've got on the screen right now. So we've got a name picker on the left hand side, which comes with wheel of, uh, which comes with classroom screen. You put the names of your students there, it then choose one randomly and then a sentence will come up once you spawn the wheel of names. So, for example, uh, it's got things like in the future, I or I used to. Uh, do this, do that, and so on and so forth. So in other words, you put the different sentence starters in there and then the student would then have to come up with a phrase or write a phrase in the chat. That's the idea. Uh, the equivalent in PowerPoint is called the spinning wheel. So you can um, just download the PowerPoint from technologic.wordpress.com and then put in your own items. If you don't fancy using Wheel of Names or you want to embed that wheel within PowerPoint, that's another uh, way of doing that. Uh, Google Form examples, I'll uh, just give you a quick flavor of this. So really popular for assessment. I was inspired by uh, Chris Betcher, who's a, a teacher working in north, north of Sydney, who's a Google um, educator. And he created this Google Form showcasing quiz questions galore. So I just made my own version looking at language learning. So here you've got things like uh, multiple choice. OK, you've got multiple choice with images. And I've given instructions step by step for each um, activity type multiple choice with a text, uh, images as answers, uh, true or false activities. Here I've recorded the audio using a tool called Online Voice Recorder and uploaded it onto Google Drive and then embedded it within uh, a form to make listen comprehension activities, um, matching, uh, putting words into the correct order, putting lines correct in the correct order in the dialogue, and so on and so forth. So 
lots and lots of different ideas there, which I'm sharing with you completely for free in today's presentation. Uh, let's carry on. Uh, here's an example of a Spanish teacher using my um, my form uh, and uh, making different activities, which is nice to see. This is the Microsoft quiz uh, equivalent. So this is uh, from Jane Bassnett's blog, What Jane Learned Next, talking about using Microsoft quizzes. Uh, this is from Mike Tolson, who works for Microsoft in the education department, 25 Microsoft forms, tips and tricks, which is really good going through the different exercise types, etc. Uh, this is a Tilt webinar by Gloria Enrico, who's based in Ireland, who's a Microsoft Innovative Expert and is, is amazing with all Microsoft tools. And she did an hour for us around using Microsoft Forms for language teachers, which is just fabulous. This is another trick from Gloria on how to insert audio into a Microsoft Form to make a listen comprehension activity. Like that. This is uh, from Esmeralda Salgado uh, using her Bitmoji to make a talking avatar using the app called PhotoSpeak. Um, which allows you to get your character to talk. Um, there's also uh, Chatterpits Kid and iFunface. Can you mute, mute your microphone, please? The person whose microphone's on. Thank you. Could you mute your microphone? Thank you. Uh, and there's instructions here as well from um, Esmeralda on how to put this all together. But you just take the video, put it on YouTube, uh, make it unlisted, and then insert it into a Microsoft form like that. Whiteboard.fi. Uh, really nice for mini whiteboard work. So each student gets their own whiteboard. They can write on it. They can draw on it. They can add a photo on it. And then it all appears on the teacher whiteboard so everyone can see everyone else's work. Here's some feedback. I love this from uh, Ms. Ganzon saying, thank you again for whiteboard.fi. It's the highlight of my lockdown. I think my year 10 we will be forever grateful to you for it, which is just lovely. And some other quotes there as well. Here's a tutorial from a, an Irish teacher called uh, Valerie David McGonnell. Um, around using whiteboard.fi. She made this in Genially, which is pretty very popular at the moment. Here's two blog posts, one from uh, Samantha Decker from the States and one from Claire Hampson from Yorkshire on uh, use of mini whiteboards and you would just then replicate the ideas using the digital equivalent. This is uh, spiral.ac, which is another way of doing mini whiteboards, which have proved very popular amongst the MFL Twitterati. There's a tutorial for you in a moment, which is here from... Um, Esmeralda that you can have a look at it. One thing that people really like is the way in which you ask the question using what's called quick fire light. Um, they then all answer the question and then if you click improve uh, on individual answers then that particular student can then um, uh, can then improve their answer and then edit it and then make it better which is just great. You can also hide the answers, hide the names as well for privacy reasons uh, and that's just fabulous. So do check that one out. Uh, that's the website. Uh, Moat, uh, really good for audio feedback in Docs, Slides and Classroom. You can also use it in Microsoft now because you can use what's called Moatpad, which allows you to record audio and then paste the link wherever you want to paste it. So if you like audio feedback, that's nice. This is Moat to Slides, which allows you to add audio straight into a Google Slides presentation really easily now. This is a GIF from Jake Miller that shows you the process. So you click on the icon here, you, you record your audio, uh, 30 seconds for free, 90 seconds if you pay, I think about 20 euros um, uh, um, for the year, you can listen to it back, you then click insert and it inserts it straight into your Google slide from there. And really, really nice as a way of uh, practicing speaking, listening and audio feedback as well. So there we are, that's that one. Uh, here's some animated feedback, the instructions are here if you fancy a bit of that. Then I've done a guide. Um, I was really inspired by a teacher from the States called Esther Park, who's doing a tilt webinar for us in um, July, which I'm really looking forward to. And I think that's really cool as well of adding your own animated feedback. Jamboard, here are 60 ideas. I know there's a session about Jamboard later, but these are 60 ideas of how to use Jamboard in a language teaching context. Um, and then this is a new tool, which I came across recently called gifcap.dev. And it allows you to record your screen and, and crop um, what you've recorded and make it into an animated GIF, which is really cool. So you could use this with Jamboard or any you know, PowerPoint tool or what have you as a way of reordering words in a sentence, for example. And, and, and then also you could add, add that as a background in Jamboard as a model and then get the students to make their own version in other frames in Jamboard, which is cool. This is a, a presentation I did for the language show, which goes to other ideas with Jamboard as well as lots and lots of ideas on using um, Bitmojis, which you should find interesting. And just a thought, if you found this interesting and you would be interested in 
asking me to do further training for you. Obviously, I can't travel anywhere at the moment. Then here are 18 example sessions. I'd love to design something bespoke for you. If you're interested around remote teaching or hybrid teaching, just let me know. And thank you ever so much for listening. I'm going to stop here and then I'm just going to quickly put the link in the chat. Feel free to tweet the link as well. Um, show it to your heads of department or whoever, wherever you are in the world and um, would love to do further webinars for you. Thank you so much to Heike for the opportunity. And I think we've got about two minutes before we need to finish. I'll stop sharing right now and hand you back to the lovely Heike Philp. Oh, sorry, back to Angelica. I'm sorry, back to Angelica. <laughs> No, maybe Heike wants to come as well. Uh, I'm overwhelmed, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and I know what I'm going to do the, the next weeks. <laughs> yeah, <there's> a, yeah. <laughs> no problem. There's enough content there for like the next year. But um, I thought I'd just, yeah, as we're recording it, people can watch it back with the pause button. Heike knows, you know, I normally have a jam packed presentation, but the fact it's being recorded and I've given the presentation as well, it should give you lots of shortcuts of what certainly UK teachers are, are using um, uh, at the moment amongst the MFL Twitter art and it should inspire you to, or it should be a shortcut to, to see good tools that are out there and then maybe tools that you might be familiar with, other ways of using them. It's, it's, it's really great <laughs> to, to have so many things in such a short time. And now I know where, where to start. And, 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 and it's great to see how this works together and see several tools, how they work together. Really, thanks a lot, Joe. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. No problem at all. And I, ca I, cannot, I cannot express enough to thank you for this one. And to be honest, every year um, I do build the virtual round table all around your presentation. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> You're the first one I'm, I'm asking, the first one who says yes, and then I start to build the virtual round table. And now the king of tools, absolutely <laughs> amazing. Um, Superman of tools, I don't know what to say it. I mean, also the, uh, the speed. And yes, we have a whole week homework after your one hour <laughs> lesson <laughs> I, th I think i think the tools are really important big round of I, I applause so. everyone thank big you. round of applause this thank has you. been just magic but, and but that I, last url yeah. that he pasted into the text chat that's the complete presentation um you have to weigh this one in gold <laughs> honestly it's it's precious it really is precious thank you so much joe and i don't know how to thank you for providing this free of charge as in free you know for us well teachers. i'm i'm it's yeah, just, I just I'm, I'm kind basically and all the tilt webinars i said i didn't i wasn't paid at all for those i just did it because morally it felt the right thing to do and i was really concerned about all these worried teachers thinking i don't know where to start all those teachers that have been you know in in uh, sessions that I've been doing over many, many years, thinking, you know, if they don't have to copy and paste, how are they going to cope and, and all the rest of it. So I've just wanted to help people out. But I think, yes, I've talked about lots of tools. But for me, one of the key messages in the presentation is the power of the community and how the MFL Twitter art have really shared so many ideas during the, uh, the pandemic, all their all their presentations in Tilt for free, etc. So what I've tried to do is just try to harness the network, as it were, as a way of um, helping, trying to help everybody uh, during this uh, this situation, um, so it's my absolute pleasure. Definitely, Thank you so much. it felt like a bunch of flowers, like a whole basket of flowers. 